Hi, Lee Veras here, bringing you Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. Today's rant was suggested by a viewer, and I'm going to be comparing Lightroom versus Photoshop. I'll look at a certain technique that used to be only available in Photoshop, but now it's possible to do something very similar in the latest version of Lightroom. I'll use this tutorial to examine structural differences between the interface in Photoshop and that of Lightroom. We'll see how there's always a bit more precision available to you in Photoshop and how it may or may not make a difference in your work. So the technique we're going to look at is one for desaturating shadows in a colorful image. This is an important technique which can improve the naturalness in colorful images, especially ones where color saturation has been pushed in the raw process stage. This technique involves luminosity masking, which is a new feature in the latest version of Lightroom. I'll look at the way you can do this in Photoshop and compare the different approaches using the different interfaces. And we'll see how the Photoshop approach offers more precision and a stronger effect. All right, so here is uh, the image in Lightroom. It's, it's had uh, some adjustments, it's had some fairly serious adjustments. The shadows have really been opened up and the highlights brought down and um, it's a fairly contrasty image and um, I wanted to make sure that there was a good saturation here. Boosted the saturation a little bit, but the, it is, the biggest problem here I think is that whenever you do something like this, you open up the shadows and boost the saturation, you get shadows that are a little more colorful than they should be. Now, I may not be able to see this on the video, but if I hover my cursor over this area and look at the RGB numbers which show up under the histogram here, we can see that in this very dark region that the red channel still has a lot of brightness. And as we approach black here, I would expect the numbers to come close together. Even over here in the black uh, belt, the red channel brightness is much brighter than it should be. It should really be approaching uh, a neutral um, where red equals green equals blue. But instead, it's still pretty red. And that's because it's in a warm room. We have a lot of red light reflecting around. The dress is reflecting uh, into the darker shadows here as well. So the idea here is to desaturate the shadows. Use a technique to desaturate the shadows. And there's a great one you can use in Lightroom very easily. So I'm going to apply a graduated filter here and I'm going to move the saturation all the way to minus 100. But I want to apply it to the whole thing, not a gradation, the whole thing. So what I do is I start right at the bottom and click and drag down. And I'll hold the shift key to constrain this. But So I'm dragging down basically off the bottom edge of the image. And so now I've desaturated the whole thing. Now, I only want the shadows to be saturated, and, and fortunately, Lightroom now has this uh, range mask option here. You can see now that the range mask is off. And if I select luminance, I now get some sliders here which control this uh, luminosity mask. Uh, I can show the mask, which right now is just everything is covered. Um, or I can just use the range uh, sliders and smoothness and see how I'm bringing back the color. I'm going to move the smoothness all the way to zero, right? So there won't be any blurring of the mask. And this is the range of the mask. So I'm going to pull this in and you can start seeing, we start seeing the highlights. And I'm going to move it down until I start to creep down into the shadow area, you know, maybe here about... Uh, we'll try 17 or so. So so here the range is from 0 to 17. And I can blur this mask now to kind of soften the transitions. And I think basically if we we'll stop at 50. That's a nice round number. And it's it's creating an effect that I like. Let's toggle the, the preview on and off. You can see what it's doing. Okay, so now that's with the full saturation. And now with the desaturated shadows. And you can kind of see, uh, it seems like it puts more shape into um, the dress here. Just, it seems like a little more contrast. Uh, 
and in fact the shadows down here if I look you can kind of see now as we approach um, the shadow area it's getting much closer to being equal um, I might actually act like to add it just a little bit I'll bring this up to 20 so I'm using the numbers to help inform me as to how how uh, neutral those shadows are and you can kind of see in the darkest part of this belt now it's pretty much red is very close to green and very close to blue so that's a nice neutral black point um, toggling on and off again you can kind of see the it, it's just taking the color out of the shadows toggling off you can kind of see the arm gets a lot warmer here toggling back on and it really kind of looks a little bit more natural or we expect to see maximum uh, saturation in the highlight where it's getting lit and we expect to see it as it approaches darker color this the saturation should drop off it shouldn't stay consistent all the way through and you can use this in all kinds of different ways um, let's take a look in Photoshop now and see what it looks like there what it looks like to do this same thing in Photoshop here so here's here's the file uh, and I haven't done any desaturating here yet. The way I would do this here in Photoshop is, well, there's a couple of ways, uh, but this is one way that I like to do it. I'm going to just select a solid color adjustment here and just make it absolutely zero saturation, kind of a medium gray. Now, the, the idea here is I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to a color, right? And we already see that this looks a little bit different than what's happened in Lightroom for some reason. Um, but before I do that, just so you can see how I'm adjusting the, the, the luminosity mask for this, I'm going to use uh, blending options. So we'll go to the layer options flyway here and select blending options right in the middle. And this gets us this dialogue here where um, I'm going to use the brightness values in the underlying layer to control how this gray layer is applied. So we're going to look through the highlights, right? So I'm just going to pull this down until you can kind of see these areas that are solid gray uh, will ultimately be um, the things that are desaturating uh, the underlying image. Now, I need to soften the transition so that we don't have a hard edge transition here so I'm gonna hold down the option or alt and split this little slider okay so now I can create a much softer edge transition and we'll change the blend mode from normal so instead of seeing the gray color we're gonna see the desaturation effect of this color Okay, so that, that's, it seems like we're getting a much stronger darkening effect because of the way Photoshop's calculating the luminosity versus the color. So when we take the color out of something, we expect it to look darker. And here, Photoshop is delivering a much darker image. So if I wanted to bring the brightness back, I can control the opacity of of this layer and you know maybe around 50% is nice okay so this this looks a bit different um, than Lightroom and in fact I have I have a lot of I have a lot of controls uh, over this that I don't have in Lightroom I have a separate layer here I can adjust the opacity of the layer uh, I have the blending option where I can adjust the range specifically to decide how much of that is being applied. Um, in Lightroom, it's, it's, you got two sliders. Let's take a look at that. So here in Lightroom, and perhaps that doesn't look as different now that I've got it adjusted, but it, doesn't, it seems a little softer contrast-wise. Um, so we've got a little, you know, these the range slider here, and this the smoothness is really kind of a blurring of the of the layer mask. So these are our only controls. There's no real control over um, the uh, 
opacity of a layer, but I can reduce the saturation, um, you know, the saturation effect by using this slider. Uh, but what I, I'm kind of curious why um, this is not as strong an effect as we see in Photoshop. So let's um, let's turn off the luminance mask. So I have, you know, fully desaturated. Okay, interesting. Um, now, there is something different about the way Lightroom calculates this desaturation. So if I go to the HSL here and I decide, okay, it's, it's now that it's, there's no color. It's been desaturated completely. So I shouldn't be able to increase the saturation of reds. And yet, lo and behold, here in Lightroom, even though I've desaturated the image at this point, I can bring saturation back up. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me, but there's clearly something different going on with the way uh, Lightroom is calculating um, the, uh, the desaturation effect. So now we'll go back to our luminance mask, and um, this is this is probably as 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 good as I'm going to get it in Lightroom. I I do like the way Photoshop is offering a, a slightly more contrasty effect, even though I haven't changed the luminance value at all. Um, there may be a, a color management issue. There may be something about the way uh, Photoshop is rendering to the screen. But um, I like the control that I have here because I also have a mask. So I can also use a layer mask to paint in where I'm uh, applying this instead of just applying it globally. And there's just a lot of controls that I have in Photoshop that I don't have in Lightroom. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the interface is the size of our controls. All right, so let me just illustrate something here. I've got a, a screen ruler here, um, and I'm going to I'm going to measure the how many pixels make up this slider. Okay, so if I you can kind of see the pixel count, I'm going right to the edge of the slider and I think, you know, we can say we've got 98 pixels. So this this slider position can can occupy one of 98 places on this slider and the range can be anywhere from, you know, 98 to wherever it is now, which is 26. Okay, so that, that's that's the range of control that you have. You can only put the you know move the slider based on how many pixels are on screen. Okay, so now let's let's compare this in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, if we look at that that dialog, and uh, I bring my ruler in here. Um, so the this slider now I'm putting it right at the edge, and this slider now has 267. It's probably more like 256 um, because you can see they give you values from 1 to 255. Whereas the slider in Lightroom could only go from, you know, 1 to 98. Um, so, you know, here we have a sort of finer tune, even though I'm, I'm constra constraining this. I can move this, those uh, sliders into a much wider range of positions so I have more granular control, right? So there's, there's definitely more control. And the, the, the Photoshop interface is like this consistently when you compare it to the Lightroom interface. They uh, use much smaller screen pictures to control things in Lightroom than they do in Photoshop. So that makes, that makes a big difference. Um, So that's why, and, and given all the level of control that you have in Photoshop, it's easy to see why uh, most of the time you're going to have more precision. However, uh, this is a pretty reasonable result, and it's very easy. To, it's easier to do this in Lightroom than it is in Photoshop. It's less involved, fewer steps. So you have to kind of weigh whether you're going to get the effect you want in Lightroom using this, this sort of simplified interface, or if you need a little bit more control like you would have in Photoshop. Okay, 
So I'll return to this topic of comparisons between Lightroom and Photoshop from time to time, and I'll show you various te different techniques for achieving certain enhancements in both applications. If you would like to see how I would approach enhancements with your own images, simply put them into a Dropbox or a Google Drive and send me a link at my email address, varus at varus.com. Well, that's it for today. I'll look at some more comparisons between Lightroom and Photoshop from time to time. And remember to subscribe to the rant and ring the bell so you'll be informed when the next rant is posted. The Photoshop Rant brings you weekly Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students with a focus on old school techniques and step-by-step -step tutorials. If you'd like to see how I might approach an image enhancement with your images, put your image into a Dropbox or Google Drive and send the link with an explanation of what you'd like to achieve to me at varus at varus.com. Thanks. I'll see you in the next rant.